Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be reviewing the Zephyrus M for 2019. It's been updated with quite a few changes. In fact, every new generation of the Zephyrus M has seen some pretty big changes. The original Zephyrus M had a shifted down keyboard, which was a bit awkward for me, especially if you try to type with a laptop on your lap, there was no space for your palms. The second generation moved the keyboard and trackpad to a more traditional layout, keyboard up top, trackpad on the bottom. This one shrinks the bezels down, it's got a more muted design and the bottom panel no longer opens up for improved airflow. So let's go through this laptop and then talk about who this is for. They've updated the Zephyrus with a much cleaner and more muted design compared to all the previous generations. There's no more gold trim around the edges anymore. It's just a matte black all around laptop. And the surprising thing is, is how well it resists oils from your hands. The finish they use for the palm rest area is this unique plasticky or rubbery feel, kind of like a well machined plastic, not something cheap. Feels quite nice actually. I'm not sure whether the chassis is constructed out of metal or plastic, but there's almost no flex on the keyboard deck, but the screen is made of plastic and it flexes fairly easily. It's also got a more traditional finish on the exterior that catches oils really easily. Hinge tension is great and it's got fairly low screen wobble. And of all the premium thin and light gaming laptops, I would say this one is one of the better built laptops. I'm still not a huge fan of the keyboard on the Zephyrus. It's got more key travel than the previous generation, but the switches are now much heavier than before, so it's more tiring to type for extended periods of time. The number pad has also been removed for a more traditional and spacious layout now that the bezels have been shrunken down, and the individually lit RGB backlighting is much brighter than before. Previously, it was more like a dim glow. This one is much more visible. The trackpad is a downgrade from last year. It's now a plastic trackpad instead of glass. It's sticky, there's a lot of friction, and due to that, tracking isn't very accurate because your finger kind of skips across the plastic. It's sized well, and it runs Windows Precision drivers. It's clicky and not too heavy, but they shouldn't have made it plastic on a $1,700 laptop. For those that remember, the previous models of the Zephyrus M had comically thick bezels, but they've been shrunken down to match all the other gaming laptops for 2019, and the panel itself is actually really good for gaming. It's a 1080p, 144Hz IPS panel, 3 millisecond response time, decently bright, 290 nits, color gamut and color accuracy are both average, good for a gaming laptop, but just okay for content creation but the contrast ratio is quite poor. It's only 500 to one contrast. I would consider 1000 to one as the standard and really good laptops will go up to 1600 to one. Now, if you'll notice, there's no webcam anywhere on the screen. In fact, there's no webcam at all. And if you don't use one, but you think you might need it someday for that one random Skype call, I would just use your phone. Anytime I've had to make a video call, I've always used my phone. The previous model also had a G-Sync display that could be switched on and off in software. This one does not use a G-Sync panel. The speakers are unfortunately bottom mounted like usual, but these sound really good. Detail and clarity is lacking, obviously, because it's bottom firing, but the bass is really strong. The vocals sound natural and the sound signature is very close, if not identical to the 2018 and newer 15 inch MacBook Pros. Pretty bass heavy. If you blast these at max volume, you can actually lull yourself into thinking that they're upward firing. On the left, you got your power, Ethernet, HDMI 2, USB 3, separate headphone and microphone jacks. On your right, there's two more USB 3s and a USB C port. No Thunderbolt 3, but it supports DisplayPort 1.4 output through that Type C port. There's a bunch of Phillips screws holding the bottom panel in place and it's running the i7 9750H with the full GTX 1660 Ti. It's got 16 gigs of single channel RAM with one slot available, your M.2 with a second slot available, and the non-upgradable Intel 9560 Wi-Fi card. They have a piece of software called Armory Crate that lets you control the fans. If you max them out, they scream like a vacuum cleaner, but you get much better thermals and higher boost clocks. With that said, gaming performance is really good. The 1660 Ti is what I would consider the sweet spot in terms of value, but there's also an option for the RTX 2060 if you want a little more performance for a bit more cash. There's a 79 watt hour battery powering this thing and I'm getting about six hours of battery life, which is about what I would expect. That seems to be the average for this battery size. 
So overall, I like this laptop. It doesn't do anything that other laptops can't, but it's still a good overall thin and light gaming laptop. For $1,700 though, the keyboard and trackpad just aren't good enough. But if you find this thing on sale for like $1,400-ish, it's not a bad buy. If they update this thing with upward firing speakers, a better keyboard and glass trackpad, this would be a really compelling laptop. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any laptops that you would like me to review next, just post a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.